So we're going to build a water bottle rocket launcher. I've tried several types of launchers and I, the object of the launcher for me is to stay in one spot because I have 10 year olds that pull on the cord, pull on the string very hard and I've had launchers that tipped over, I've had launchers that scooted over and that's very unpredictable and to me when you're dealing with 10 year olds that's pretty unsafe. I chose a scrap piece of 2x2 two two square three quarter inch plywood as my base. I drilled a 3 8 hole here and a 3 8 hole here and the reason for that is I bought two of these spikes that are 3 8 by about seven and a half inches long. And what I do with these is I put them in the hole on each corner and I take a hammer and I drive them into the ground. This anchors this plate into the ground so that when you pull the release string then you don't have the problems of the launch pad scooting on you. Next, I, along the center line here, I drill two 3 8 holes. Looks like they are three inches apart. And I use two 3 8 inch by five inch carriage bolts. And we're going to place them through the base. Then we're going to place two 3 8 inch flat washers on them. And then two 3 8 inch by 16 nuts. And because they're carriage bolts, they're threaded all the way down. In order to tighten these nuts down, you're going to need a 14 millimeter wrench or a 9 16 inch wrench. And what this is going to do is it's going to pull the carriage bolt part. It's going to pull this part up into the wood and sink it into the wood so it won't turn. So you only need one wrench. You don't need to hold it. You just sink into the wood and stop it from turning. You can see that now is flush up against there. This one's still sticking out. So I'm going to tighten it up. And as I'm tightening it up, you may be able to see the carriage bolt sink into the soft pine wood. The, bolt is, the head of the bolt is sucked up against the surface of the wood. All right, now you've got that. It's going to be the basis of the launch pad. Now we're going to put another 3.16 nut on there. We're going to put flat washer on, 3-8 flat washer, 3-8 flat washer. Now I've got a piece of angle steel. This is nine inches, nine and a half inches long. And the holes are three, eighths, three inches apart. And so they'll be able to go straight through this steel. You may have to loosen one of the uh, carriage bolts a little bit to get it to wiggle around to be able to get it into the steel. And there we go. And tighten the carriage bolt back up. Then I'm gonna put another 3 8 flat washer on top. And I have Wing nuts, 3 8 16 wing nuts. This way that when you're out in the field and you're launching rockets, you can adjust this without having to have a wrench. You just back the wing nut off and adjust the lower nut. So this is what it's going to look like from the side. 
So you can adjust the height of this side or you can adjust the height of this side independently. <clears throat> the holes here, the round holes are 3 8 I had to drill this one out to a half inch. This is where our cork is going to sit and be pumped up with air that's going to pump the rocket up. So I bought a Hillman number no. four rubber stopper from Lowe's. They were like a dollar thirty nine cents and a number no. four stopper. It's smaller on one end, larger on the other end, and it will fit inside of a soda pop bottle. And so the whole assembly is going to sit on the launch pad like this. In order to get air into the rocket through the stopper, we're going to have to drill a 3 8 inch hole through right through the middle of it for a piece of 3 8 inch copper tubing. First thing I'm, first thing I'm going to do is drill the 3 8 inch hole through this stopper. I'm going to hold it with a pair of pliers. Uh, a drill press would probably be better, but I don't have one. So I'm going to do it with a cordless drill, 3 8 inch drill bit right through the middle of this cork. Open my vise up to give me a little bit of room to drill through it. Got a hole through it. Now I'm gonna cut myself a piece of copper tubing. Normally, I would use a tubing cutter to cut the copper tubing. But a tubing cutter is the better tool. Uh, the problem I have is I don't have a tubing cutter that I can find, so I'm going to use a hacksaw. I'm going to cut off about six inches of copper tubing. Now, this is pretty soft stuff, so like clamping it in the vise, you need to be real gentle with this because you can crush it pretty easily. And it's not going to take a lot of pressure to cut it. There we go. Now, the downside to cutting with a hacksaw is that it leaves a pretty rough, ratty end on it. So I've got a, a knife, a pocket knife will do just to clean this up on the inside. And then I've got a file, anything like that will clean up the rough edges on it, make it a little bit smoother for you. We're gonna put a flare on one end. That means we want it to flare out. When we put it in here through the, the rubber cork, we want the end of the copper tubing to be belled out, kind of like that shape. For that, you're going to need a flaring tool. You can buy these at an auto parts repair or you can buy them at a hardware store. And then you put the driver in here. It's got a cone shape on it that makes the end of the copper tubing flare out. And as you screw it down, you can actually see it bending it out. You can see how it's all nice and pretty and shiny on the inside. And now it's flared. Okay, so now we want to put this flared tubing through this cork. But we want to make sure that the flare goes on the small side of the tubing. This is the part that's going to go inside of the bottle. So we put some dishwashing soap on it to get the rubber cork to slide onto the tubing easier. Nice. And then we can wipe it all off. And so what we have now is the rubber cork with the flare on it that keeps the copper tubing inside the cork. 
And now we need to bend the core of the tubing and put a flare on it on this end for another piece of rubber tubing. Copper tubing is very soft and it's very easy to bend it and kink it. And if you kink it and crack it, then this is trash and you have to start over again. If you want to, you can try to use one of these. Now, in order to use one of these, it's got to be the same size as the tubing. So this is 3 8 tubing and a 3 8 spring is what that is. And what it's designed to do is help you, help prevent you from kinking the tube as you bend it. This is also a tubing bender. A little bit higher end, but very nice and handy to have when you need it. Puts a nice bend in the copper tubing. And now I'm going to put a flare on the other end of the tubing. Very nice, very nicely done. All right, now we can attach some other plastic tubing on this side. Back to our platform, I will show you how this piece is going to fit together. So I've got a half inch hole here drilled. It's just big enough for that flare to fit through and the cork sits on there like that. The bottle will fit on it like this. There is the possibility that when you stick this 3 8 tube through this cork, that the, the cork expands and becomes too large to fit easily into the bottle. And so you may have to shave some off with a knife, a razor knife or something like that, shave a little bit of rubber off for it to be able to slip inside of a soda pop bottle fairly easily. All right, now for the other tubing. I have some 3 8 clear vinyl tubing. It's half inch OD, half inch on the outside and 3 8 on the inside. This original piece was 20 feet long. I don't know how much I have left, but the purpose of this will be the air compressor, whatever you use, a foot pump or whatever will be attached to one end. And this will be attached to this end and force the air from the air pump into the rocket. Now, this little thing you're going to have to make from half inch PVC pipe. This is a half inch PVC pipe cap. This is a valve stem that you can buy at an auto parts store. This is a piece of half inch PVC pipe, cheap plastic. And this is an adapter from the plastic to a threaded end. And I've got a 3 8 inch flared pipe end on this piece of brass and it will stick into the other end of the hose. Purple stuff is a primer, and then the glue is blue. Once you seal this thing, it's airtight. It's, it's tight. And we're gonna tighten the hose clamp. Now, what this is going to do for you, this is a valve stem, just like in your car, on your tires. And so I can attach an air pump to this and pump up the rocket. So the air will be forced through here, through this, through the tubing, all the way up through the cork into the rocket. That's the plan. Now, the cool thing is this will be about 15 feet away from the rocket. Again, I want safety. I don't want the kids near the rocket. So I've got a long hose so that the kids don't have to be near the rocket. I'll also have a long string to pull the launcher so that the kids don't need to be there with the rocket when they pull the string. For our next phase of our build, we need five L brackets. These are five inches long and one inch is wide. So if you buy them, you're going to need the screws that go with it. You're going to need three for each bracket. The screws I have for the brackets are number 12 by 3 quarter inch Phillips head wood screws. You're going to need to pair these up 
Now, my marks on mine, mine used to be welded together. And so that's why these burn marks run here. Not everybody's got a welder, so I wanted to show you how you could do it without a welder. So I pair them up like that, set them side by side. I'm going to use two hose clamps. These are about an inch and a half in diameter. I bought them at Lowe's, so I've got four hose clamps, two for each pair. And I'm going to squeeze it and put it over the old bracket. I'm going to squeeze the hose clamp and place it over the old bracket, not to cover up the screw holes. Now I'm going to take, these are 5 16 head, I'm going to tighten the L brackets up with the hose clamp. Now I've got basically it flattened it out and now it's nice tight pair of L brackets that are not going to separate. That's one pair. I want to do two pair. Now I should have already had a diagonal line. I want to mount these pretty close to straight down the middle. I'm going to draw myself a diagonal line from corner to corner. Now the brackets will go on and I'm going to screw them on like this. From the center I'm going to space these brackets out one inch on either side. All right, and then I'm going to drive in the number 12 screws. Check, make sure the hose clamps are still tight. All right. <clears throat> and I'll give you a top shot. You can see what it looks like from the top. And I'll give you the side shot. So what we have now is the cork has got to be pinched between the bottle and this surface here. Well, there's too much gap, so we need to raise the surface of this metal up about a half of an inch. So we back our wing nuts off. And then twist the lower Yeah, it's got a little bit of pressure on it. I can feel that. All right. Pull that out of the way. Pull that out of the way. Now let's see if we can put the nails in. The first nail is always easy. Second nail requires a little bit more determination. But it's in there. And I will give you a look at that from the top and from the side. You put a loop in it and you tie it around the nail like that so that whenever the kid pulls on it the nail comes loose
Same thing for this one. Just put a little loop in it, put it around the nail, tighten it up, and now you have that. When they pull on it, okay, both nails come out at the same time. And then that's the way it's going to pull out. So now I've got a handle. It's about four and a half inch long, piece of half inch PVC tubing. Put the string through it. Tie a knot in it. Now you have a handle. So that when the kid pulls on the string with the handle, everything comes out. At this point, the launcher is ready to launch. Now it's time to start building a rocket and launch this dude. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe.